Hello everyone, we're going to go through the basics of functions in C++, specifically using predefined functions. And at the end, we'll go through some more examples of casting to follow up on the first video that you watched. To begin with, a function is a new concept to you in coding, so you want to think of a function in terms of a small program. Oftentimes we'll refer to what's called top-down design, where you'll start to break a program down into smaller tasks. And what will happen now is these smaller tasks will often become their own functions. Up until now, every program you've written has had one function called the main function, and we'll start to use existing functions within main, and by the end of this unit, we'll create our own functions that are what are known as called from main. By the end of this unit, your main function will become almost less and less code than you're used to seeing, and you'll break off um, all the code into your own functions that handle a lot of the different subtasks. So C++ has a lot of predefined functions that are in existing libraries. So using these functions that are already in the C++ language will require us to use another hash include directive in order to get access to them. Uh, we've had to use hash include iostream to use the input and output commands pretty consistently throughout the year. And when we start to use either mathematical functions or other functions, we'll rely on these libraries that already exist um, that people have written the code for these functions in, and we'll bring them into our program. So you might use hash include cmath for some math functions, um, or hash include the C standard library, and even some others as you go further into your coding career. Let's begin by just looking at two simple mathematical functions that we'll often rely on, one for taking square roots and one for calculating the value of exponential expressions. Both of the functions that we need for this exist in what's known as the cmath library. So the square root function is abbreviated with the name sqrt, and the one that raises um, different bases to powers is called the pow function. So to use those, you would have to use hash include cmath. Again, you put that right where the hash include io stream is. If you did not have that include statement, you'd get errors. And there's some simple example code down here to show using them. So first one shows printing out the value of the square root of 6.25. You just plug in 6.25 to that square root function in parentheses, and it will display the value. You can also assign what the square root function gives you back as a value into a variable. So the second one will plug in 25, take its square root, and then store that value in the variable x. And the last little code segment there shows how to use the pow function. The first thing you plug in is the base and then the exponent. So you'll notice there's a list separated by a comma there, 2.1 comma 3. You can also plug in the name of a variable when you're calling a function. So the first example here shows entering a value from the user, and then we'll plug in the, that value into the square root function. So again, it doesn't need to be a constant like the last slide. It can definitely be the name of a variable that has a value stored in it. And you can even do more complicated expressions in a function um, call as well. So this next example asks for the area of a circle and then backtracks to the radius, divide by pi, and then take the square root of that value, which is what you're seeing in that second code example there. So let's go through some important vocabulary and concepts that go with functions. I think I've used some of the terminology, but we'll clarify the different aspects of using a function and the vocabulary that goes with it on this slide. So the first major thing is what's known as a function call. So any expression that uses a function um, is referred to as calling that function. So the statement sqrt 16.0 um, is a call to the square root function. The 16.0 that's in the parentheses is known as the argument, um, which is basically the input value to that function. So in this function call, we're plugging in the argument of 16.0. And this variable root over here is being used to store the return value. So SQRT 16.0, that's going to give us a return value of 4.0. And that return value is stored um, in that variable root on this slide. So again, a function call, any expression that uses the function, the argument is essentially what you're inputting into it. And the return value for functions that give us values back is what the function produces as an output. So again, to recap some important vocabulary, the argument is just the input value to the function. That can be a constant, like you saw on the last slide with 16.0. It could be the name of a variable that has a value in it, or a more complicated expression involving both variables and constants. The return value is just what the function computes um, and gives you back basically the output of that function. And a function call is just any expression you see where a function is used. And a function can definitely have multiple arguments. Think back to the POW function that had two arguments in it. Um, but you cannot have more than one value return. A function can only give you back uh, one value. 
This chart, uh, no need to copy this. I'm going to post a copy for you uh, to refer to, but this is the most common predefined functions that you might be using that accomplish different mathematical tasks. So one important thing to take note of is that library header. That's the library you'll need to use in a hash include statement. So many of these are in the CMath library, other ones are in the C standard library, and just take note of uh, where each one is stored. So if you don't have that hash include statement, you'll get an error if you attempt to use any of these functions. Another detail to be aware of, there are actually three functions here listed that all take an absolute value. The ones you're most likely to use are either what are known as abs or fabs. So abs expects integer inputs, and fabs expects double inputs. So abs for integers and fabs for doubles. And another detail to be aware of is you can definitely use an integer value anytime a function expects a double. Um, and int integers are a subset of a double value. So this call here of square root of 4.0, you can definitely plug in 4 in place of 4.0 there, and it's going to handle it just fine. To end this, let's go through some examples of typecasting to follow up on that first video that you watched. So I'd like you to pause this and work out the value um, of the five expressions here for yourself. And then after you've worked them out, we'll go through one by one what each one is. Make sure you're reading very carefully and paying attention to details, um, taking note of the casting that's involved, not in the first one, but the uh, the second through fifth ones. And just be very mindful of uh, these might not all perform what you expect them to. So hopefully you took my advice and paused and worked these out for yourself. Now let's go through them one by one. The first one is making an attempt to store the division of 13 divided by 5 in a double, but going back to unit 1, you're very well aware that when you divide an integer by an integer in C++, you're going to get an integer out of that. So the first one is going to assign A the value of 2, since int over int produces an int. Uh, 5 goes into 13 two times, so you're stuck with the value of 2 in that one. The second one is an attempt at a cast, however, you have to be mindful of the use of parentheses here. It's going to do the division first and then cast. So you're still going to see 13 over 5 being performed with integer division. That's going to give you 2. And then the cast to a double is left, leaves you with a value of 2 or maybe 2.0, uh, you might say. But that's not going to correctly get you the double precision out of that. The next one um, will cast the value of 13 to a double prior to the division. So notice. There's a different ordering here. There is no grouping symbol around the division, so it's going to cast the closest thing um, to that double cast that it sees, which is the 13, treats that as 13.0, divides by 5, and then you'll get the value of 2.6. The next one's very similar. The extra parentheses are just purely for clarity to show that it's the 13 that's being cast there. Um, so very similar to the first one. The 13 is cast to 13.0, um, and then you'll see it as uh, 2.6. So Essentially, I would say the one assigning double C and D are really the same thing. D just has the parentheses to around the 13 for extra clarity. And the last one in line with these other ones, uh, C, D, and E, the 5 is cast to a double, treated as 5.0, and that would also assign E to be 2.6. So just be mindful of your use of parentheses um, and the expressions where you're going to be casting a definitely, especially the difference between B compared to C, D, and E here. All right, so that's a wrap on an introduction to predefined functions and some examples of using casting.